In this video, we're going to be learning about coterminal angles, quadrants, and trig functions at a point. So think of an angle in terms of a rotating ray. So if you think about a ray, we are going to call the beginning position as the initial side. And then we rotate about a point, which is called the vertex. So we have our vertex and we have our initial point. If we rotate about this point, we end up with some final point. And so this final position is called the terminal side. So we generate an angle every time we rotate from the initial side to the terminal side. We generate a positive angle by rotating counterclockwise. Which might be opposite of what you think because you generally think, if you think of a clock, you think a positive is going clockwise, but this is opposite of what you think. So positive angles are generated by counterclockwise rotation, which means negative angles are generated by clockwise rotation. So if we have our graph, this is zero degrees. If we rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, we end up here at positive 90 degrees. If we rotate another 90 degrees, we end up at 180 degrees. Rotate another 90 degrees, we end up at 270 degrees. And lastly, rotate another 90 degrees, we end up at 360 degrees. So that means if we start at some initial point and end by going counterclockwise, this is going to be a positive angle. And if we start at some point and rotate it counterclock or sorry, clockwise, this is going to be a negative angle. So real quick, before we start talking about our different um, angles that we can generate, we just want to make sure we know what the four quadrants are. So if we have a graph, here's quadrant one, here's quadrant two, here's quadrant three, and here's quadrant four. And notice I labeled them by going counterclockwise. So that's actually how they're generated it goes one two three four in a counterclockwise direction which ends up being a positive angle now we have something that are called coterminal angles so coterminal angles are angles that have the same initial side and the same terminal side. So what you're going to do is say you have an angle that's like 90 degrees. So say I have this angle right here gives me 90 degrees. So I end up pointing straight up north. Now, someone might get here by starting at zero and rotating 90 degrees. Or say you're facing east over here, you rotate 90 degrees, but then you spin, oop, but then you spin all the way back around again, you still end up facing this same direction. So think about spinning in your chair a bunch of times. So each time you spin, you add another 360 degrees. Each time you spin a full circle. So another coterminal angle for 90 degrees would be 90 plus 360, which is 450 degrees. Another angle would be if you started at 90 degrees and you rotated your chair the other way, a full circle. You end up facing the same exact direction, but now 
you spun negative 270 degrees. So the way that we generate coterminal angles is by adding or subtracting 360 degrees. So you can tell if two angles are coterminal by if they're apart from by each other by 360. So if you had something like negative 150 and 210, and you were asked, are these angles coterminal? What we're going to do is take negative 150 and add 360 to it. If we do, we end up with 210 degrees. Another thing we could do is subtract 360. If I subtracted 360, I end up with negative 510 degrees. So all three of these degrees, you end up facing the same way, but you get there different ways. So you might think of coterminal angles as, well, I want to face this direction. I can get there by spinning this much. I can get there by spinning that much and spinning around all the way again. I could get even dizzier by spinning this much, spinning that much, and spinning that much again. So I can keep adding 360 and subtracting 360 to end up in the same position. And that's what it means to be coterminal. The last thing that we're going to do today is be able to evaluate all our trig functions just by giving one point. So if we let theta be the acute angle in the standard position, um, whose terminal side contains that point, what that means is we're going to start off with our graph. And what we're going to say, let's say we are given the point 5, 3. What that means is if I go over 5 and up 3, I can graph my point 5, 3. What we're going to do is generate an angle whose terminal side contains that point. So we're going to start off here, and then we're going to rotate so that we end up at that point. So here's our terminal side, and we'll call it theta is our angle that we generate. Notice we kind of made a right triangle whose adjacent side is 5 and whose opposite side is 3. We can figure out the other side by figuring out the hypotenuse. So we can use Pythagorean theorem to say 5 squared plus 3 squared equals c squared. If we do 25 plus 9, we get 34. So 34 equals c squared. So c is equal to the square root of 34. Now we have everything we need to find our th six trig functions. So sine of theta cosine of theta, tangent of theta. Let's start with those ones. Sine of theta, if you want to write at the top of your paper, Sokotoa to help you. Sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So that will be 3 over square root of 34. Then we just have to rationalize, multiply both top and bottom by square root of 34. So we get 3 square root of 34 over 34. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 5 over square root of 34. We can rationalize to get 5 square root of 34 over 34. And lastly, tangent of theta, opposite over adjacent, is 3 over 5. Now we have our other three trig functions. We have cosecant of theta, secant of theta, and cotangent of theta. See, cosecant of theta is just like sine but flipped. Remember, try to flip this first one and then we'll end up with something that doesn't have a square root in the denominator. So we'll say this is square root of 34 over 3. Secant of theta, again, let's flip this first one so that our square root ends up in the numerator. Square root of 34 over 5. And cotangent of theta Theta, we just flip our tangent, so that's 5 over 3. Let's just try one more to make sure we've got this. So let's try negative 5, comma 3. 
Now, the point negative 5 comma 3, if we were to graph this, that would be over 5 to the left and up 3. So here's the point. We know how to graph our points is negative 5 comma 3. Now let's make a triangle out of it. So what we're going to do is make a triangle with the x-axis. Now, this is going to be our theta. So that means we spun from here to here, and we made this right triangle. Now, if you think about the side of this right triangle, even though we went negative 5, the length of that triangle is still 5, and the height is 3. Notice, just like before, our hypotenuse we can figure out by saying 3 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. So c is equal to square root of 34. Now the one thing that we're going to do when figuring out sine, cosine, and tangent is keep this as a negative 5. I know that it looks like a triangle and length can't be negative, but the way that we're going to figure out the right signs of sine, cosine, and tangent is making it negative. So what we're going to do again is say sine of theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 3 over square root of 34 which we can rationalize to get 3 squared of 34 over 34. Our cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Notice this time our cosine ends up being negative. And then we rationalize just the same. So our cosine now is negative 5 squared of 34 over 34. And last up is tangent, which is opposite over adjacent. So our tangent is going to be negative or positive 3 over negative 5, which turns into negative 3 fifths. Lastly, we had to figure out our remaining three trig functions. So we have cosecant of theta, we have secant of theta, and we have cotangent of theta. Cosecant of theta will flip our sign, but remember, let's use this first one, so the square roots on the and the numerator. Square root of 34 over 3. Secant will flip square root of 34 over negative 5. And cotangent is negative 5 over 3. So notice this time, because our point was in the second quadrant, it made cosine and tangent as well as secant and cotangent negative. So that's why you have to pay attention to where this point is and make sure you pay attention to labeling it as negative.